Hello, I'm Lelda Smits for Australia's Finance News Network and joining me from Gold Development Company, Indochine Mining, is CEO Stephen Promnitz. Stephen, welcome to FNN here in Hong Kong at Mines & Money. Thank you. Indochine Mining has recently delivered results from your flagship Mount Kari project in Papua New Guinea. What has been defined? Well, our recent results have been quite exciting. High grade numbers that have confirmed the presence of Bonanza zones. And these Bonanza gold zones, they're thick, they're high grades, 20, 30, 100 grams. And best of all, because we've proven this concept, there's a good chance we'll find more. So it adds ounces to the project, it improves the economics of the project, and uh, it shows it can be a whole lot bigger. How do the results compare with what you've uncovered previously? And what do the results show you about Mount Kari's potential? Well, recently we got all of our results from our 2012 drilling program. And the great part about it is that not only confirmed past results, they confirmed the widths, um, but we've actually got, on the whole, better results. And so that should bring on uh, an improved resource in the future and, again, improved economics for the project. We completed a pre-feasibility study, which was solid, but that was on a past resource. So these results indicate that uh, things are looking better for the future. Indochine Mining plans to conduct a full feasibility study this year. What will the study focus on and what outcomes will you be hoping for? Well, it's going to be a fairly standard uh, bankable feasibility study. We hope to get the first draft out perhaps by uh, towards the year end and, uh, and the full bankable feasibility study by the end of the first half next year or thereabouts. Uh, it's going to be fairly standard. We'll focus on all the key things. But the idea of getting a bankable feasibility study is really for two things. One, we can uh, trigger the application for mining leases. Uh, two, we can lock in an agreement with the government, with local people. And three, we can also then look at how we could finance the project as well. In the meantime, what's next on the agenda for your drill program and what timelines are you working from? Well, our, our current drill program is focused on identifying more of these bonanza zones, identifying where they are, how they look, how they dip, where the extensions are. Uh, that's the key focus of our drill program at the moment. What's, what's exciting about them is that we have a geologist called Tony Burgess and he had worked on the neighbouring world-class gold mine and he spent all of his time actually identifying very similar high-grade bonanza zones. And so we're hoping with his help, his guidance, we'll actually find where they go down deep or a depth, they bell out and that's where we find our jewellery boxes. So it's pretty exciting times. Now, Indochine Mining has forecast production in the first half of 2015. What are the priorities which need to occur before then? The, well, the, the key uh, plank that we have to deliver is this bankable feasibility study um, in the first half of 2014. That's so that we can get mining leases approved, we get our environmental permits as well because we're putting through an environmental impact study. Uh, that's a key thing. You, you can't do any mining until you have a mining lease approved. As soon as that occurs, um, presumably at the same time, we'd be discussing financing issues and how to, to put that together, uh, actually construct the mine, and uh, then yeah, somewhere in 2015. Look, we're not absolutely certain when that timing would be. Um, perhaps it's going to be mid-2015, perhaps a little bit later, but that'll depend a little bit on some of the outcomes of the feasibility study. And Stephen, what production rate are you targeting at this stage? Look, we'd like to kick off at about 150,000 ounces. Our pre-feasibility study showed that we could uh, produce anywhere between 100 and 160,000 ounces, depending on the year and the head grade. Uh, we're expecting our head grades to improve, so indicatively that's what we're looking at. Uh, that may change through a bankable feasibility study, but that's basically our target at the moment. So Stephen, as you move into production, could you talk us through your funding model? We've actually had a fairly long list of uh, investment banks and major financiers come and talk to us about it. And we're quite happy to enter into preliminary discussions, um, make sure that they're comfortable with lending into Papua New Guinea, make sure that they're, they're looking at this style of project. But uh, the flip side is it's early days and we won't really be able to, um, to crystallise it in those discussions until we complete a bankable feasibility study. But reasonably, uh, we would expect that we're going to see a balance of equity, debt, and perhaps something in between. Uh, our pre-feasibility study indicated about 200 million to construct this mine, maybe a little bit more. And, uh, and I think given our market cap and the interest that we've had to date, that's probably entirely reasonable, even in this current market. Finally, Stephen, what are the major milestones Indochine Mining will be aiming to reach this year? And what should investors be keeping an eye on? Well, in the short term, we expect to be putting out more results about Bonanza Zone drilling. 
then we'll incorporate that into a new resource model. Hopefully that new resource model will be out somewhere around June this year. Uh, we'll be kicking off our bankable feasibility study as well. So there should continue to be more drill results, some of the outcomes there. Um, we'll complete final um, study with our landowners probably around mid-year. Um, and then perhaps the first draft of our feasibility study internally come year end. Stephen Promnitz, thank you for joining us in Hong Kong and for the update to Indochine Mining. Thank you very much for the opportunity.